So angle ABC. So just look at those points. Here's A, here's B, here's C. That's the angle. That is the angle. And that's telling me that it's congruent to angle C, B, D, okay? Just connect, connect the points, that's that angle. So we have two congruent angles. So I know that the measure of this is equal to the measure of that one. They're congruent. That's what congruence means. And not only mean, it means their angle measures are congruent. All right, so do we have an angle measure congruence here? We do, but is this an angle measure? No. No, it's not. It's an expression. So both of these are 3y plus 2. Both of these are 3y plus 2. So then I've got a third angle. Dylan, I've got a third angle here. And that angle measure is 8y. Does that confuse anybody that that's a, not an angle measure, that it's just an expression? No. Does that bother you, Manuel? Yeah. Uh, no. Well, it shouldn't, because that's the power of algebra. I think it's the power of God. That is the power of algebra. It can be anything, that angle measure. And I could make it an algebraic expression like that. Really? So what we want to have to figure out here is the measure of angle ABC. It's the measure of that first angle they're giving us right here, angle A, B, C. All right, do you have a, do you have a, a strategy here that you can figure out to solve for Y? What do you got, Alex? You got nothing. Anybody else? You really? You guys know angle addition postulate. The measure of angle a, B, C, plus the measure of angle C, B, D. Please, please go back to your chair. Equals the measure of angle A, B, D. What's the problem over here? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start moving people here. Okay. This is your strategy. The two interior angles added together equals the bigger angle. That's your strategy. So now that you know that, you substitute in what you know they're equal to. Well, the measure of angle ABC is 3y plus 2. The measure of angle CBD, that is also, I'm sorry, 3, I meant to write 3. That's also 3y plus 2. And that's equal to the big angle measure, which is just 8y. That is your solution. That's the algebra. Now you solve for y. You guys all can do You guys all know algebra. I'm going to let you do that. Number seven. Number seven. Use the figure on the right to answer the questions below. What is the value of x? Well, what do you see that's x over here on, the, on that diagram? Well, what do we got? We have two intersecting lines. How many angles do two intersecting lines create? Four angles. Do you see any angles that are equal to each other or say any angles that are maybe uh, you know something about? Well, here's my x. My x is this angle right here. It's 6x minus 6 is that angle measure. What's that? Say that one more time, I'm sorry. So what do you know, we have vertical angles here. Do I have a vertical angle that's congruent to 6x minus 6? Yes, 25. How do you know that's 25? Wouldn't the top and bottom be the same? They would, but we don't have that angle measure. So you can either say, um, you either can try to solve for this value here. Where am I looking at? That, that, this, that this is a vertical angle? Or you got to figure out something else. Can, can we figure out this angle measure? Yeah. How am I going to do that? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. The way, the way he always tells you that your magic works. Yeah. Brian, you're to 
It's magic? You're telling me this is magic. It's the magic of algebra. It's the magic of geometry. Or I should say, maybe it's the power of algebra. The power of geometry. You said it with such force, it's like, I like that. Don't you feel powerful knowing geometry? No. I feel like this is a movement of Thanos of like math. And I feel threatened. I am Thanos. How, how do I threaten you? I hope I don't threaten you. I hope I challenge you. That's, yeah. That's what I try to do, is I try to challenge you to tell me what you know, what you learned. And then take it home to your families and, and, and just spread the power. That's what it is. Knowledge is power. You don't believe that? You don't think knowledge is power? I, I, I do. So how do I figure this out? How do I figure out question mark? All right. Well, we know they're equal. We know that this is a linear pair with 36. Well, if it's a linear pair, if these two are a linear pair, what's a linear pair? You guys remember? It's two angles that are located along a straight angle. What's a straight angle? Yeah, it's a straight line. What's the measure of a straight line? 180 degrees. You guys know this. You guys have the power in knowing this. So if, if 36 is a linear pair with the, my question mark angle. I'm just going to call this question mark angle, angle one. Well, isn't it a vertical pair with, with, with this angle over here? Let's call this angle two. Isn't it the same? That, that, that's a straight angle. That's a linear pair. That's your strategy. So 6x minus 6 plus 36 is a linear pair, and linear pairs are supplementary, Alex. They add up to 180. The rest is algebra, and you guys know algebra. You guys know algebra. So this next one, what is the value? What is the value of y? How do you know that? How do you know it's 3? No. No. Come on, let's get serious, Alex. What do you know? What do you know? You know very little? You know this. You should, because 36 and 3y are what kind of angles, Angel? No. Olivia, what kind of angles are they? 36 and 3y. We talked about this. They're vertical angles, and vertical angles, Alex, are congruent. Yes, I, I, thought, I literally just said that. I told you, the power of algebra, the power of geometry. So we go from geometry, and suddenly we have an algebraic equation. You guys know algebra. Solve for y. I'm going to the next one. I'm not solving these. This is just algebra. You guys know algebra. Now I'm going to graph these, these, these Cartesian coordinates. I have a segment, AB. Their endpoints are negative 10, 3. Negative 10, 3 is right there. That's my A. And then 4, comma 5, which is uh, B. That's my B. Everybody with me? So now I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw that segment. Where's that B at? It's right there. Four or five. That's the coordinates. Whoa, that, that's interesting. Why didn't that go with it? I guess I got to reposition that. I was hoping that would stay in there. All right. <clears throat> it's asking me what are the coordinates of the segments AB's midpoint. You guys remember this? No. You don't remember this. You guys remember how to do average? You remember average? It's the same thing as average. So average is like midpoint. So the midpoint, I would say, of AB, I'm going to show you the equation. It's not complicated. X1 
plus x2. You add the x coordinates and you divide by how many there are? Two. It's just like average. Then you take the y coordinates, you add them together, and you divide by two. You divide by two. Okay? So let's plug in what we know. Well, we know x1 is negative 10. So negative 10 plus x2 is 4. And we're going to divide by 2. y1 is 3. And then we're going to add 5. And we're going to divide by 2. So negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. 3 plus 5 is 8. And we're dividing by 2. So what's negative 6 divided by 2? Yeah, it's a negative 3. Now what's 8 divided by 2? Look at that. The power of math. That's perfect. Does that make sense that that is the midpoint? Well, let's see. Negative 3. 4 is right there. Yeah, that looks like the midpoint. That looks like our midpoint there. All right, next one. Now it's asking us for the length of segment AB. That's distance formula. You guys remember distance formula? Distance equals x1 subtract x2. You, that's the difference, and then you square it. And then it's y1 subtract y2, and you square it. <laughs> The power of geometry. <laughs> That's your strategy right there. Now you got to just plug in the numbers. So Alex, negative 10, and we're subtracting 4. And we're squaring it. The y, we're taking 3, and we're subtracting 5, and we're squaring it. And I'm taking the square root of all that. All right, what's negative 10? Subtract 4, Alex. Negative 10 subtract 4. I got your Right now. You're still on page one, Manuel. Come on, man. All right, this is negative 14. I said that. Negative 14. What's 3? Subtract 5. That is negative 2. So negative 14 times negative 14, Michael. That's 196. Good. What's negative 2 times negative 2? That is 4. So now we're adding, Alex. 196 plus 4. 196 plus 4. Yes, 200, I hear. It's 200. All right, you guys remember simplifying radicals? You guys remember when we did simplifying radicals? I said you need to factor what's in the house by the largest perfect square you can think of that, that, that factors it. So 200, do you guys see a perfect square that, that divides that? Which one? What is it? So name your perfect squares. 4, 9, 16. 25 divides 200. Can we do better? Maybe. 50 is not a perfect square. 25, then we go with 36, 49. 64, 81. Any of those work? How about 100? A hundred does do it. I apologize, Angel. I missed the boat. So this is two times a hundred. What's the square root of a hundred, Angel? Ten. So this simplifies to ten square root two. That is your simplified answer for that distance of segment AB or the length of segment AB. Questions on that? You got a question? Why don't you write this down, Alex? This is for a grade. 
All that for that little information. We do. It's going to be due the day of your final. It's Friday. You exempted it. Well, then you give it to me before you take the final. Your final's on Friday, so give it to me on Thursday, give it to me on Wednesday, but make sure you've completed it. Well, I can give it to you Friday before we take it. Oh, you can do it Friday before we take it. Yes, ma'am. Next one. We've got another point here. Two negative ones right there. I'm graphing these. Negative ten fours right there. And then we've got a segment. We've got a segment. And I'm going to connect these two. All right. That's our segment. And it's asking again, what is the coordinates of the midpoint? What's co how do we figure out coordinates of midpoint? We find the average of the x's. We find the average of the y's. Let's do it. 2 plus a negative 10 divided by 2. Negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2. What is that? All because you requested it doesn't mean you receive it. All because you requested it doesn't mean it's granted. Did you have a free period this morning? Because all I heard you in the hall earlier, like, I brought you a kid. And everyone was like, you take this for me? I did. I did. Uh, there was a lot of lost kids this morning that didn't know what testing room they should be in. So I felt like I was hunting children that this morning. I don't think that's the right term. Yeah, but it, do, it doesn't matter. I was, I was begging them. I was... I was capturing them. You are captured. I'm bringing you to your room. <laughs> really? You think I would embarrass you? Why? So when we add 2 and negative 10, we get negative 8. And negative 8 divided by 2 is what? Well, that's negative 4. Now I'm going to just leave that as 3 halves. So this is our midpoint, negative 4, 3 halves. Does that make sense to you, DeMarcus? Well, yeah, look at that. That's negative 4, 3 halves. That's right on that line. The power of algebra. Willy Wonka. Next one. Find the length of CD. That, that was the distance formula we did. I mean, this is a lot of... A lot of math. But you guys can do this. It's not hard math. You just gotta make sure it's organized. So the length, we're gonna take x1 and we're gonna subtract x2. Then we have to square that. And then we're adding y1 and subtracting y2. And we're squaring it. And then we have to take the square root of all that. So when we take a negative 10 and we subtract it, this becomes positive. So this becomes 2 plus 10, which is 12. And then this becomes negative 1 minus 4. Well, that's like adding two negatives. That's like negative 1 plus a negative 4. And that is a negative 5. Okay? Now the good part. Now the good part. We get to square these. What's 12 squared? Two. No. That's a 12 times 12. 144. Five times negative five. It's like immediately just. That's 25. Now the next one, Dylan, you got. What's 149 plus 25? Plus 25. 169. Yes, sir, it's 169. So now we have the square root of 169, and that is a perfect square. 
That is a perfect square. What's the square root of 120, 169, Alex? Huh? Square root of 169. Nope, that would be 81. You should know it. I asked you guys to memorize the first 25. Oh, you said 100, didn't you? I did. I don't remember what you said. I asked you to memorize the first 25 square root numbers. I asked you to amaze your friends, amaze your parents. Uh, 13. It is 13. That's your answer. So what I just did, 5, 12, and 13 is what's called a, a, a Pythagorean triple. You guys remember that? I talked about it. A Pythagorean triple are three whole numbers that solve the Pythagorean, tri Pythagorean theorem. Crazy, huh? All right. Last one of the class period, and then I'm going to ask you guys if you what I'm going to ask you guys if, if for which, which problems you want me to do. Watch the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. No, yeah. please. We're going to watch the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. No, no, I want to watch that new Lego holiday movie. Uh, what? He's talking about the Star Wars. Movie. The Star Wars Lego movie. Oh. You, you haven't seen that yet? I've seen the trailer. I don't watch Star Wars. I'm pretty sure it's really they go back in time and different like parts of the movie. You've seen it. I've, I've seen like trailers of it. I have one of I've never watched that. It this. It's, looks good. It looks I'm funny. I'm going to bench watch the Mandalorian during the break. Mm. It's, it's a thing. It's not a thing in geometry, but it's a thing elsewhere. Here we go. Let's binge geometry. Let's do some binge geometry. Doesn't sound fun. Why? Like, come on. I'm not really tired or nothing. Mm -hmm. Make your dream come true. Okay, so this, the whole is 90. The part is 10 and 4x. So this is part plus part equals whole. So 10 plus 4x equals 90. And that's algebra. And you guys all know algebra. Yep. All right, that's it. That's it. We out here at 45? Yeah. Let's watch a movie. Yeah, let's watch a movie. No. Okay, so I was playing it. I'll discuss it Well, you guys must have a question on, on a problem on the review, right? No. You don't. They have like different versions. I have a question. Can we watch a movie? I'll consider it, but I want you guys to at least work on this final review, okay? Let's get her done.